This is a video on Trubindo's The Life Divine Chapter 14, The Supermind as Creator. Good morrow. In the last videos, we have seen the possibility of perceiving Satchitananda on the one hand and Maya and the human ego as natural obstacles to do that on the other hand. Now, in this rather very difficult 14th chapter of Sri Life Divine, he introduces the supermind as a higher faculty beyond the ego and beyond the mind and beyond the five senses as a means to grasp or perceive or receive the absolute. This supermind is neither the same as our common mind, only better somehow, nor is it the same as the absolute. To get access to the supermind, there is a radical change necessary, an inner transformation. Instead of the Vedic truth consciousness, Sri uses supermind because he feels this term is more elastic and flexible. But what is it? What can it do and how can we access it? These questions will not be all answered in this chapter, but also in the next three chapters. The important thing here is that there is no unbridgeable gulf between the Divine Absolute and mankind. If there was, no higher consciousness would be possible. Same goes for Brahman and the world. We have already seen in previous chapters that they are all one and have to be one. The world and its beings are not outside or separate from the Absolute, but part of it. And not only that, but from a higher vantage point, all is in harmony and delight. No theory of division can lead us to the Supermind. It has to be inclusive. Funnily enough, inclusivity is becoming a hip word in spiritual teachings nowadays, 100 years after this book has been written. The Supermind is also linked to intuition and surrender, as you might have suspected already, because there can be no progress without them. And because the divine will and plan is and must be part of all its creation. To access the supermind means to always take this into account. Nothing is happening here that is not somehow part of this divine plan or will. No matter if we like it and understand it or not. So the supermind does not divorce the will from the idea or the will from the manifestation. And of course, this is not like Schopenhauer's or Nietzsche's personal willpower. It is divine willpower. We can only will to follow it. And this is again the importance of Karma Yoga I mentioned in the Ego video. A simultaneous act of complete surrender and insurmountable will to see it through in spite of all adversities. Unfortunately, the path to the summit, or to the inner depths, if you like this better, is not without pain and labor. And this pain and labor may be to a large degree a cultural problem. Later, Shobindu thought a lot about cultures. Because most of us are living in a world and society which does not support spirituality. To the very contrary, we are being alienated from our true nature and punished for following a spiritual path and rewarded for sleep and greed. It is easier in countries like India and Bhutan and many indigenous tribes like the Kogi. I also made a video about the Kogi a few months back, where there is a traditional place in society for awakened and enlightened individuals who are even revered and even listened to. In the technological West and countries much influenced by it, our worth is usually measured by the money you earn and the taxes you pay. There's almost no place for economical mavericks in kleptocracies. And this is also an apparent obstacle that has to be overcome nowadays 
in most countries, in most societies. The difficulties were different in Buddha's times 2,500 years ago, or even before that in the Vedic times, or even 100 years ago in Shorobindo's time. And we have to face them, not run away. For some reason they are part of creation in Maya now, and therefore are also part of the divine. But how? Normally our minds have an idea. I am, for example. And then there's a will, a will for action. For example, I want to earn one million dollars. Or I want to meet the absolute. And there is an artificial gap here, two modes which are really one. There's no existence independent from force and no idea independent from the will. It appears so only in our dual thinking. Positive and negative, black and white, and so on. An idea on the one hand and a will to put the idea into action on the other hand. No, they're one, one and the same. Only one would be chaos constantly trying to form itself. If there were only one without the other, either will uh, without idea or idea without will, there would be either only static equilibrium or constant chaos. There would be no creation or a static creation without life or constant creation, eternally writhing chaos, rising up and falling apart again. Now the mind for Shurubindu is part of this dynamic process and it is not a finished tool. Our human mind is not a culmination as many philosophers and scientists want to convince us of. It is a passage, it is an ongoing project, a beginning. It can transform itself into something very different. And it was Sri Bindo's and the mother's main research to speed up this process and transmutation. We have to arrive at something mind-like that can conceive of things beyond unity and multiplicity, beyond idea and action. But thinking and thoughts are not fitting words for this then anymore. The common mind and its power of thinking is part and parcel of multiplicity and can only grasp division. It is not fit to grasp a oneness, a true unity, but the supermind can. Mind is an instrument of analysis and synthesis, as Hegel has pointed out so admirably. But he, as well as almost every other thinker, was not able to arrive at a mind beyond duality. Hegel thought that the synthesis is the highest pinnacle of the mind. But this is never ending, for every synthesis becomes just another thesis sooner or later, like the greatest sattva becomes a new tamas in the end. The mind wants to know but cannot. The mind is not a proper tool for knowledge. If we want to truly know, we need another faculty, another tool, that is better tuned into the manifested divine, better suited for receiving the truth. We need a sort of mind that is capable of consciousness, which is of course what religions and science think humans already possess. But this is only partly true. Consciousness is accessible to us, but we do not possess it, although we can let it possess us. The supermind can know the truth of being. It is a comprehension rather than a thinking and needs no analysis. It is more like hearing and seeing than like thinking, as the Vedas hint at. This is why the ancient Vedic seers called themselves seers, and not something else, not seekers or philosophers or priests, but seers. The supermind does not arrive at universal truths by mulling things over. The knowledge is just there, no process in time is needed can be seen, because both supermind and divine are beyond space and time. 
and we will hear more about this in the next chapter 15 the supreme truth consciousness thank you to all my patrons thank you for joining me on patreon and facebook and liking subscribing hit the bell button sharing the videos with your friends and see you soon